Well, good morning and welcome back to the Alaska Sea Life Center for another live virtual visit. Uh, it's a little brisk today, but we're, we're kind of outside. We're actually in our aviary, which is a, a covered structure, but of course, uh, as you saw in that live view earlier of the aviary, uh, all of our birds are here. And so today we are going to be talking a little bit about what goes on to get the birds ready in the morning, that sort of thing. First, of course, we're going to thank our sponsors for these virtual visits. Uh, so the sponsor for this season is the Royal Caribbean Group, uh, which has been just fantastic to be able to bring these live to the public. So thanks again to Royal Caribbean Group uh, for sponsoring this season. Now, as I mentioned, it is a little brisk. We've actually got maybe a winter storm coming in uh, today, and so we're, we're all kind of waiting for some snow. If you see like a little flake here and there, uh, you know, it's, it's coming. We're going to have some, maybe, maybe next week we'll have some snow for you. Uh, but this morning it's about, what, 25 degrees Fahrenheit here in Seward, uh, which is about like negative three and a half to, to four degrees uh, Celsius. And we've undergone daylight savings time change here. Uh, so our sunrise this morning actually managed to be a little light. You can see that view out there looking over Resurrection Bay. Uh, it's cloudy. You know, we didn't even really get a look at the sun this morning because, um, yeah, it's, it's still, in, still in quite pop up over the mountains there. And with that cloudiness, it's just generally light. Uh, the bay is very nice and calm and smooth this morning, though, uh, which is always fun to see. So as I mentioned, we're going to be talking about our birds today, um, specifically sort of our morning so, routine. Uh, we are here in the, what is this, food prep? <laughs> Sorry about that. We're just jumping guns here. Uh, so we're going to be talking about the morning routine with our birds. And as you saw, we're going to be looking at our food prep for these animals. Uh, so for our first clip today, we're going to be taking a look kind of down at the food prep kitchen, uh, just for a short, brief little visit down there to kind of see the facilities. But as you'll hear from Laura, the aviculturist we speak with today, uh, we won't be staying down there for very long. So uh, we are here in the, what is this, food prep area, I guess, for the whole center. Yeah, this is the central food prep kitchen that we're in, which is where we store um, the diet for the day. Okay, so we're not actually gonna be doing the food prep in here, though. This is just where it's kind of stored? Yeah, so other departments do their food prep in here, but we find it really helpful to do it upstairs um, in our space where we can kind of piecemeal it if we need to, depending on the needs of the day. Um, sometimes we'll start with the bigger fish if we have like a lot of hungry birds or sometimes we'll start with smaller fish if like maybe in this um, the summertime we have babies. Okay, so we're gonna grab our food and then we're gonna head upstairs to the bird curatorial area back behind the aviary. Mm -hmm. So we'll just follow along. All right, so we're gonna start by pulling out the stuff that we pulled yesterday. So this has been thawing in our fridge for around 24 hours. So when I was saying smaller fish, this is what I'm talking about here. All right, so the refrigerators we just saw, obviously those are pretty small. Uh, so we do have larger storage here at the Sea Life Center for our food, and that's actually right back here. So what is this? This is the main freezer. This is where we keep about a month's worth of fish. Okay, so you just grab stuff out of the, the fridge. Mm -hmm. You're gonna go in the freezer and grab the stuff for tomorrow. Is that basically what's yeah. happening? So it thaws overnight. All of our thawing here we do is under cold temperatures. That's to make sure that the fish are gonna be um, safe for all of our animals to eat, that there's no bacteria or anything growing in them and that they don't accidentally cook because our birds don't eat cooked fish. There you go. All right, well, we'll head right on in. Right, so that was just kind of our first peek at the morning routine that our avian staff under, undergoes here. And so we were down in the food prep kitchen, uh, but as mentioned, uh, avian doesn't even really do their food prep in that kitchen. They're mostly just getting things ready. Uh, you know, they're, they're pulling things out of the freezer. They're putting them in the fridge to refrigerate. But what we're going to be looking at a little bit later uh, is actually them up in the curatorial. Now, I wanted to mention with that freezer, as we panned through that freezer, um, that isn't even the full freezer, uh, or, or rather, that 
is the entire freezer, but it's not full. Um, so we do get deliveries basically once a month. You know, we, we hold a month's worth of food in there. So we'll get deliveries of food, and it just fills that freezer, you know, big old pallets of food. And this isn't just the food for the avian staff here uh, to, to be feeding our birds, but it's also the food that's being used by husbandry staff or being used by our aquarium staff. So that's the, the central supply. We also do have a bigger freezer offsite that can hold even more food. Uh, and that's actually kind of where we get some of the, these poles from when we bring them in. Now, before we move on to our second part today, I just want to remind you that we love to take any questions during these live programs. So while you're watching this next clip coming up, if you have any questions, you can uh, either type them in the chat if you're watching live. Uh, if you're watching live, you can also text us. We have that number down in the description below for this video. Uh, but if you know, it just slips your mind and you just bolt awake, uh, that you forgot a question a little bit later on uh, tonight or in the week, you can always email us at ask Tuffy, that's A-S-K-T-U-F-F-Y, at alaskasealife.org, and hopefully we can get an answer back to you pretty quickly. But we're going to head on over and see how that food is prepared. All right, so now we're back in the curatorial area. So that's kind of the, well, like the behind the scenes area of the aviary. Yeah, we hauled all this food up here, so now I'm going to start setting it up so that we can start preparing it for the day. Have you got to cut it up or? Some of it gets cut up, um, especially if it's too big. And then um, all of our treats we prepare slightly differently, but our fish we mainly just sort through and we'll toss in some bowls that we'll put out um, overnight or the main diet bucket that we've got. All right, perfect. So we'll just watch how you're kind of getting things set up. So I start with my bigger fish because this takes longer to thaw. This today is herring. Give it a little break apart to help the thawing process. Anything you can do. And then into the bin she goes. And then these we'll just wait for later because they don't take as long to thaw. And now, while I start my fish thawing, in the water, I'm gonna set up all of the things that I need to put that fish in. So this is our main diet bucket here, and we've got a strainer that goes on the bottom. So as the fish, um, if there's any water or anything, it's below the fish. And then we have three bowls that we'll put out later tonight so that if anybody is hungry overnight, they have some little snacks. And we also have a Vitafish container. What's a Vitafish? A Vitafish is a vitamin stuffed in a fish. <laughs> um, so every morning we try to get everybody we can onto a scale. And that first fish of the day that they're going to get is going to have that vitamin in it. So that vitamin has any little nutrients that might be lost in the freezing process for these fish. It's like your morning daily vitamin. And then I got to let this stuff a little bit so anytime there's like these bigger blocks you need to break them apart or they're never gonna get um, thawed so you were asking about cutting up the fish these are some of the fish we cut up the hooligan are a local alaskan fish people will fish for them along the turnigan arm i have to cut their belly because this actually forms a circle and we want to make sure our birds don't accidentally choke on anything so these are one of the ones that we slice open the belly. And then we cut in nice little slices for our birds. Always at angles. And then they go in our cut fish container. And the heads go to the side for later. All right, so I'm gonna start pulling out these herring and sorting them. So I'm doing the same thing, I'm looking for blemishes, um, and then I kind of put them in these containers here for later. And then these are the night bowls that I'll put out later today at the end of the day so the kids have some food overnight. And I aim for them to be about halfway filled with fish because any of the treats that we have left at the end of the day will go on top. And now we'll start piling them into our bucket. So this is what we'll pull from 
through the day. So people that come to the Sea Life Center, sometimes they'll see folks out there with these silver buckets, and that, that's what's in there, is, is food for the animals, whether it's for the mammals, uh, for the aquarium, or for the birds. Yeah, um, and then we have even smaller silver buckets over here that we can either use for training if we just wanna take a smaller thing out, because this can be pretty heavy. Yep. Um, or we can also use them during our encounters. So sometimes people um, will get to go out and feed the birds too. Um, but yeah, they'll be using those smaller buckets because this can be a little cumbersome. Right. And I've actually seen the, we've got some really small buckets that can like clip on your, your waistband. Yeah, it's these ones right here. So they're nice because you can hook them onto your waistband and they're not, this bucket here can get to be quite heavy especially in the morning before we've eaten down some of the fish in here. You just got done with the herring and it, it's like you're putting all the herring in and then you're gonna put a new layer of different fish and then a new layer of different food. Is there sort of like a stacking order for these? Yeah, so we try to put our biggest fish on the bottom and work our way up toward, to the smallest fish to be on the top. Um, that's for a couple of reasons. So our herring takes longer to thaw because it's bigger. And also the weight of the herring would crush those smaller fish. So we like to keep it um, as intact as possible when we're giving it out to our, our birds. Okay. But yeah. Um, so I'm gonna start thawing those smaller fish now. So I've got some silver sides in these little bags um, and I'm gonna throw them in the cold water. And while we're waiting for those to thaw, we'll work on some of our other treat items. So I'll probably go with um, the squid next. For the squid, the thing that I'm looking for is called the pen. So I need to dig down in the squid and pull it out and hopefully it won't break on me. Just like that. And then I like to cut these bigger ones apart because the kitty wakes, while they love the squid, can sometimes struggle when they're really big like that. Now I'm gonna move on to our smaller fish that we have. Okay. Um, and this is a fish that we have pretty much every single day. This is our silver sides, um, noted for that nice big old stripe down their side. Silver sides, they don't get chopped up or anything. Just like the herring, they could just be swallowed whole. Yep. I'm gonna start, I'm gonna do the exact same thing I did with that bigger fish, that herring. I'm gonna start layering them on the night bowls first and I'm aiming for the night bowls to, as I'm done with all of this, to be roughly halfway full. Um, something that's a little bit different with these silver sides than the herring though, is sometimes they have bycatch in them. Um, so I'm also being a little bit more careful with these guys. All right, so we are done with our silver sides. So now, we have some surf clam here. Okay. And this also gets cut up. So most of the things that we cut up happen to be treat items. Um, so if these fish that I were sorting earlier happen to be too big, so a little bit over an inch or so, or just like too long, um, we would cut those up as well. But as I was sorting, I didn't find any of those guys. Um, so today really only we're cutting up the treat items that we cut up every single day. Okay. So with the clam, things that I'm looking for is I'm going to cut out any of the guts and the gills because um, they just don't get fed out to our birds. And then I also cut open the siphon as well. So this is the siphon right here. Just make a little slice there. And then I will put them to the side and then I'll slice all of these at one time at the end. So I like to do kind of a pre-sort with these clam and then at the end, I'll come through and make them smaller pieces for the birds later. And now the last diet item we've got for today is our mussels. So the clams were out of their shells, but these mussels are still in the shells. Are you gonna have to kind of like shuck those out for the birds then? Um, no, actually, all I'm doing is severing a little mus a, a muscle in the muscle okay. um, that's gonna hold their um, shells together tight. Um, and as long as I make my knife go through that, the birds can actually open the muscles on their own. And they, that's really enriching. It's a really fun thing for them to do is to think about how to get their food from time to time. Something else that I'm pulling is I'm gonna pull this bissel thread, but I'll just pull that out. 
So the only thing I'm doing with the muscles is removing the bissel threads and then slicing through the abductor, just like that. And that's it. It's a nice thing to do um, at the end because it doesn't take too much thinking. It's pretty meditative. You just find your little bissel threads and remove them and then slice and it's good to go. All right, so that was a kind of a look at the food prep. Now actually behind me, you can see uh, that that isn't the end for the morning for our avian staff. They're out actually cleaning the habitat now, which is something we'll cover in another video. We're actually gonna be doing a virtual visit series, kind of looking at each of the, the departments here, uh, the animal care, the, the setup necessary, the behind the scenes work that it takes to take care of these animals. So today we're looking at that food for the birds. And I, I think we actually got a couple questions. And so we have another Laura uh, taking questions today. What do you got for me, Laura? All right, I got two questions for you. One of them, and it may have been answered in that video, but what are these uh, birds eating? Okay, so what are these birds eating? They die, it does change a little bit here and there. Um, but mostly small fish for a lot of them, right? You can see here a lot of those silver sides, uh, which again, with those tiny little fish, they've got a little stripe down their side that, that's very reflective and hence their name. Um, but we also were preparing stuff like clam. Uh, here's that clam actually getting, uh, you know, guts and gills removed and again, cutting the siphon there. Um, and cutting that siphon was uh, uh, basically cutting a loop, which was also mentioned for another fish in there, the hooligan. Uh, which Laura called the donut fish. And it's called the donut fish uh, for a couple of reasons. One is that it forms that loop and we want to cut that loop, right? Because loops aren't really safe for some of these animals. You don't want them to get you know, their bills stuck down in there or something like that. Um, but the other reason that we're going to call donut fish is that uh, our birds really, really like them. They're very high in fat. Um, they're more of a snack option for these birds. But they'll also get fed herring, um, squid, uh, and the mussels as well. And krill sometimes. Uh, a lot of them really like picking at those krill, uh, which are the very small shrimp, and they'll occasionally get roe uh, or the eggs from some, some animals as well, uh, uh, fish. Uh, was there another question, Laura? There is. There's a question from Nathan, who is a third grader over in Soldatna, Montessori. What is bycatch? Ooh, that is a fantastic question, Nathan. So bycatch is stuff that's kind of caught uh, on the side of, of like what you're trying to catch, right? So let's say you go maybe uh, going for salmon, you're snagging for salmon, and you, you, you snag, and I have caught a teeny tiny little fish before. Um, here in Resurrection Bay, you're allowed to snag for salmon, and so you're just pulling that hook through the water, uh, and every once in a while you'll get like maybe a little tiny, you know, uh, a sand lance or a herring or something like that, uh, and those would be bycatch, right? Or likewise, if I had a net that I was trying to catch a bunch of, uh, or salmon, again, let's say, or herring, and maybe I caught uh, like a, a squid or an octopus of that, that's bycatch. So when Laura referred to bycatch in our bird's food, it's this food that we buy. We're expecting one type of food, we open up that box, we're thawing that food out, and maybe there's just another little fish in there. Uh, and so what Laura was looking for was any fish that would be a problem fish for some of our birds. Like some fish have little spiny fins and that sort of thing. So we don't want our birds to accidentally, you know, get those and, and maybe choke. Any other questions, Laura? We do have another question. Um, which of these foods are farmed and which are wild caught? Ooh, that is a great question. Um, I don't know uh, of, of our foods here if any of them are uh, heavily farmed. Now we do actually get some freshwater shrimp that aquariums will use. I'm not sure that birds uses them here. Um, and those are actually uh, an invasive shrimp. So those are just kind of like pulled out like crazy. Um, but uh, as far as the rest of them, uh, many of them are caught just here in Alaskan waters. We do have some smelt that come from across the country, um, but uh, most of them are just caught here in Alaskan waters. Another question? Another question. Um, what kind of birds do we have here? <laughs> Fantastic question. What kind of birds do we have here? I'll actually move the camera over here for you all a little bit. Uh, we'll go back and we'll see what we can get. So we do have many ducks. Uh, down there in the front, we actually have some spectacled eiders. Um, and then in the back there, we've got some moes. Let's see if I can zoom in on them. So this kind of highlights the two different types of birds we primarily have here. We have sea ducks, and then we have uh, alcids. So birds like our moes back here, these are alcids. They're related to puffins and the like. Uh, those are the ones on the rocks, the, uh, the, the moes there. And there's actually a puffin there on the rock as well. Uh, a, a horned puffin there on the very highest point of that rock. So alcids are diving.
birds uh, from the northern hemisphere. Uh, they dive down through the water, and in the wild, they would be eating many of the same types of fish that were feeding them here. Uh, they actually have to go and chase them down while they're still alive. So our birds can swim down underwater. The puffins in the wild, they can get down maybe 200 feet. Uh, the mers have actually been seen to get down at least 600 feet underwater. Uh, so in the wild, they're kind of chasing these fish around. Now here, we do have fish in the aviary. Um, I don't know that you can see them in our window. I'll try and show you. So this tank is actually 22 feet deep. I don't see any fish down in there. Oh, maybe there's a little rockfish over in that second window that you can just barely make out. So we do have fish down there, but we don't have any fish that is small enough for our birds to eat. Uh, now, of course, you know, people asked, oh, what birds do you have? And I talked about the ducks and I talked about uh, the, the alcids, but I didn't talk about our uh, kittiwakes, which always want to be mentioned, no doubt. Uh, so up on the top there, kind of in the left side, let's see how close I can get on them. We have some red-legged kittiwakes. So these are gulls. Uh, and they are uh, just kind of hanging out on those cliffs. You can tell from their, their guano there on the cliffs, but they really like to just live up there. And that's actually their nesting cliffs. Now in the winter, uh, they're not really nesting there and they fly back and forth between there and some other cliffs, uh, kind of chasing the sunlight through the day, which with uh, the weather being what it is today, I don't know that they're gonna get a ton of sunlight. But I hope that kind of uh, answer your question about some of the birds we have. We will at some point do a virtual visit just about birds because that's something we get asked is what are the animals you have? What birds do you have out there? So I'd love to do a virtual visit all about just the birds in the aviary. Another question, Laura? Nope. Not at this time. So if anyone has any other questions, we've still got some time, but I'm actually gonna toss in sort of like a little bonus clip here in just a moment. Uh, while we were making that food, Laura uh, put out a little tub there and, and she said, oh, this is for the Vita fish. And I said, what is a Vita fish? Just what it kind of implies, it is a vitamin in a fish, and that actually is its own process during food prep. So we're gonna take a look at our third clip today about Vita fish. All right, I need to count out 50 of these. What are these that you're counting now? These are small bird supplements with okay. vitamin A. These are the vitamins that I was mentioning earlier okay. when I put aside this particular bin of fish, mm -hmm. and I said these were gonna be Vita fish. These are the Vita okay. to the fish. So the, these go inside the fish, kind of like, uh, I guess for anyone that's ever had to give a pill to their dog or their cat or something, you gotta like kind of hide it in something they do want to eat. You actually tuck these pills into the fish. Yeah, so I um, pop open the gill and shove it in there. Okay. Um, and that's actually pretty fiddly. So our vitamins are pretty small, but yeah, that's what I'm doing. So I count out 50 first. Um, and then I'll start stuffing these fish with the vitamins for today. So I take these fish and I'll show you with the herring because it's a little easier to see. So you just pop open this gill here. I'm gonna turn it towards me. Um, and then you take your vitamin and then you just shove it in the gill. So you can't even tell it's in there anymore. And that's a Vita fish. All right, so that is the, the making of the Vita fish here at the center. And we can even do other things, right? Like uh, if, if our birds need more oil in their diet, for example, we can get krill oil, uh, which, you know, is some sort of stuff some people take in pill form, but we can actually inject that into some of the fish to make them a little oilier, a little fattier for our birds who would be eating these oily, fatty foods out in the wild. So uh, the Vita fish is a way for us to supplement their diets um, and uh, just kind of like, you know, sometimes you gotta trick your, your animals if you've got pets at home or maybe you know, you've got livestock even, sometimes you gotta trick them to take their medicine. Um, maybe you even got like a younger sibling that has to be tricked to take their medicine uh, now and then. And so uh, Vita fish are just our way of making sure these animals are getting the vitamins that they need. Uh, it seems like we maybe have another question or two, huh? We do have another question. Um, this one came in via text. Um, <laughs> this might be really good for that. How do you keep those, your hands from getting super cold when you're prepping all of those frozen fish? Oh, super cold? Um, I think people kind of just get used to the, the cold hands, honestly. Um, now we, we do use you know water to thaw these out, but we, we aren't running them under like super hot water. We don't want any of these fish to, to really get hot. As Laura mentioned, everything is a cold thaw. So really, yeah, your hands just get cold. And some people do have sort of like insulated gloves and that sort of thing, but if your hands get wet and then they're in gloves and then they're out of gloves and they get wet and they're covered in fish slime, 
the gloves can just get nasty. So uh, some people just kind of, you know, they're, they're just living with cold hands, basically, um, and there's not much to do about it. Uh, if you have ever seen, we send out a sort of a, a notification every once in a while. We have a wish list on Amazon for the Sea Life Center. And something that the avian staff always puts up there is hand warmers. Um, because not only are they getting cold hands when they're prepping food, um, but when they're out you know, cleaning the habitats or, or cleaning pools, um, in, through the winter, they get pretty chilly. So they get through a lot of hand warmers here. Uh, another question? Um, yeah, a couple of, kind of a dual question. How do you know that the animals are eating enough? And why was that animal on a scale? Uh, yeah, those are related, right? So um, when we were talking about the vita fish in the main clip, we saw there was a, a bird on a scale getting handed a fish. And so the vita fish get doled out at what we call scale sessions. And that's, that's something we're actually going to look at probably in a couple weeks. Uh, I had a chance to kind of sit down and, and, and talk about these with, uh, with Laura. Uh, and maybe we can even just do one live for our program. It would be fantastic. But a scale session, uh, the birds actually sort of all line up over on that beach there. You can see uh, there's that little green mat for them. And they all line up, and uh, a scale gets put down, just like a food scale. Um, and the birds sort of hop up on that scale one at a time. We look at their weight. Uh, we write down what, what their weight is for the day. And then they get rewarded with the fish. Uh, and if they need a vita fish, they get their vita fish first. And then maybe they get another fish after if, they, if they're a little underweight. So that scale session is a way for us every day to check the weight of the animal. Also, just to kind of you know, look behaviorally. If you have a bird that always shows up for scale session and maybe one day it seems a little timid, that could tell us something's wrong too. Uh, and then during breeding season, uh, as they're starting to develop eggs, uh, we can see that in their scale session weights as well. So that, that's how we make sure they're eating enough, uh, is they hop up on that scale. And the reason they're on that scale is part of that scale session, just a daily checkup. Another question? Yeah, do um, the birds have favorite foods or do they have personalities? They definitely have personalities. Um, some of them are really goofy. Some of them are really standoffish. Some of our birds here love socializing with people even more than like other birds. Um, so they each sort of have their own personalities. As far as a favorite food, yes, they can be very picky about the food they're getting. Um, and in fact, uh, for a scale session, we actually have a couple birds that you might offer them a fish and they'll be like, no, I don't want that one. And so we actually have a couple very picky birds here that during scale session, they get offered the whole bucket of fish and they get to pick the one they want out of that uh, because they'll just be so picky about it. We'll just let them choose the one they want. We have another question from Doreen. Um, she asked, um, are, uh, how many birds do we have here at the Sea Life Center? Oh my gosh. So we do have more birds than just in the aviary. Um, and our numbers here flux because we do allow them to breed out. And then we have transfers with other facilities. Um, I'm not sure of our current numbers here right now uh, in the aviary, but anywhere between you know, like mid 50s to, to 70, uh, we'll kind of flux around in there just between transfers uh, and, and, and uh, births. All right, Alex, I think we might have one, uh, time for one more question. Right, We're going to end you on a, on a stumper. That oh, might no. be the text later. All right. What is the bissel thread on a mussel? Oh what is that? So that's great. So you saw when Laura was preparing the mussels, she took this little, uh, it's like hair, uh, called bissel thread. She took that out of the mussel. And that's because we don't want the birds like basically eating this hair. Now, the mussels make bissel thread. And it's one of the strongest natural substances that you'll find around here. Just walking down the beach, if you find a mussel, you might know that mussels really hold tight to rocks. Uh, they love to just fasten down on rocks. And the way they fasten down is with those bissel threads. So they're like these sticky, gluey little threads that they grow onto their surfaces that they want to live on. And it anchors them in place. And they're super, super strong. They're a little bit thicker than like a hair off your head, but they're very kind of tenacious to get off of these muscles or get off rocks. Uh, and so bissel threads are how our muscles anchor themselves to the rocks that they grow on. Or, you know, the piers on a dock. And are those something that can grow back uh, when they're alive? I believe they can make more of them. 
Uh, but the problem, of course, is if a muscle got fully detached off of a rock, um, it's, it's no longer where it needs to be to be like properly filtering water, and so it might get tumbled around, it might get pushed up on a beach. The reason the muscles anchor themselves down is they kind of find a good spot where there's nutrients floating in the water that they can filter out. They say, this is where I need to be, and they anchor down. So I'm not even sure if they'd get an opportunity to grow back, um, but they certainly, it's something they grow. All right. No other questions, it looks like. And we're kind of at the end, although we get this great little show of all the, uh, the steam, we do use warm water for cleaning the habitat to kind of just making sure everything is scoured uh, since the birds can make quite a mess on the rocks. But uh, I'm going to kick your view on over there, and I'm going to bid you uh, a farewell. And thank you again for joining us for the virtual visits. And thanks to our sponsors for these virtual visits. Uh, the sponsor making this free for the public, Royal Caribbean Group. So thank you so much. Uh, and that means that we can share these with you free this season. Uh, and we've been having a blast. Again, if you think any questions after the fact, uh, maybe you're watching this not live, you can type them in the comments or you can email us at asktuffy, A-S-K-T-U-F-F-Y, at alaskaseelife.org. And feel free, you know, we got quite a few good ideas for episodes just in the questions today. If you have an idea of something you want to see a virtual visit about, you can email that to us as well. But until then, thank you for joining us, and we'll see you again later.